Okay, moving on from brushes, we need to talk about another fantastic thing, which is the paint. There are all kinds of paints, as we know, and all kinds of palettes that go inside those paints. I tend to use um, a palette that is looking like this, like a little travel palette. Um, this is a Loxley metal box, came empty, I had to fill it up with paints. Three, The five that I've got in here are white night paint. And those white night paints came in a pan. The pans are these kind of little containers. I tend to prefer paints that are squeezed in. So I have lots of those paints that are squeezed in. I tend to prefer Windsor and Newton. Um, SAA also do a good one. But different paints have different qualities. And again, back to the brushes and the paper, stick with a few and just stick with them. I'd say for at least the first year in your painting, stick with a few. Now I'd say for beginners, this is just too many colors, okay? You need to just have a few, few colors, um, and then you can get used to them before adding more colors. Um, on my website, I go through and look at the sort of basic uh, colors that you need to get. I would say as a golden rule, you would need yellow okra or raw sienna, very similar. Ultramarine blue, always. Alizarin crimson, and then you've got kind of primaries there. If you're painting lots of landscapes, burnt sienna, burnt umber, so that's five. Always a neutral tint because that can add punch to the mixes that you've got. And that would probably be about it, really. And then you can start adding and experimenting with other colours. Okay, so stick to six or seven colours and you'll be okay. Now then, palettes. Last little thing. There are all kinds of them. I've done a review of this Loxley palette, um, which you can, I'm not going to go through this anymore, but you can get that uh, on my YouTube channel. It's a nice heavyweight palette. Really good. I paint a lot outside and this is a perfect little palette. Others I prefer, like plastic type palettes. So this one is a Liz Deakin palette. Um, and it looks like this. Why do I like this one? Well, it's plastic, which means if you're outside, your hands don't get cold. If you're indoors or outside, it's got these very, very deep wells, which is where you mix up your paint. So mixing your paint up in here means you can get lots of liquid. Now I paint large paintings um, normally 15 by 22 inches and bigger. Um, so you can see that's going to hold lots and lots of liquid the more I start putting in here. So that's a great palette for my style of painting. Also, it's got a quite limited range here as well. Another palette you might consider, you can get lots of these types of palettes around. They look like this one. This is a um, Juice Q palette, plastic, quite cheap. If you want to hold it, you've got a ring. You can put your finger through the ring. Also got a couple of places for brushes to go, which is quite nice. I'll show you here, you can pop a brush in. Oh, one thing I meant to mention about these, the Skoda brushes, they're great because they go inside as a travel brush. So that pops on there. So you don't damage uh, the bristles. Anyway, back to palettes. Again, similar kind, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. So quite a limited palette there. As I said, stick to around six or seven to start with and then start adding more. Another palette. Yeah, I'm a collector of palettes. I love them. I'm not sure what this one is. It was really, really cheap. I haven't filled up here. You can see there's even more spaces for paint. I haven't bothered because I've got enough in, in this side. But again, big wells for mixing, which is great. Big wells where you can mix lots of liquid because watercolour by its very nature means we're dealing with water. So they're all plastic palettes. Another lovely plastic palette that comes with lots of colours is the White Knight palette. White Knight, really vibrant colours. Um, this is one of their palettes that it comes with. Uh, you can clip this on to add an extra mixing area. These are quite nice. Um, will hold quite a bit of liquid. Let's show it around this way. So this, just to show you that. Um, 
it goes over the top there to protect the, the paints but actually clips on as an extra palette these are very vibrant colors and one of the cheapest on the market for the quality of paint white knight st petersburg okay what else have we got let's have a look here's a little traditional um winsor and newton type palette small little diddy palette the only thing i find with diddy palettes they come with diddy brushes there's a little diddy brush in there like a tiny little brush and then paint people start to mix up tiny amounts of water in the watercolor palette and then they start to paint really tight watercolors what i would call um just restricted watercolors you're not going to get enough water in a brush like this to paint pictures properly this brush is for a job and the job of this brush really is to just bring in some fine detail if you want to bring in big luxurious washes and have great marks you need to go for a better type of brush and you're not going to get much mixing up in here so for my style of painting that's a no-no um moving on Here's another plastic palette, which is a great one. Oh, we've looked at that one. We'll take that one out again. So, uh, moving on to a metal palette. This is a Windsor and Newton metal palette. Um, not used. It came with lots of tubes of paint that we've already seen earlier. Tubes of paint went in there. Mm, it's okay. You would just put the paint, squeeze it out on here, and use it, and then just mix in this side. It's okay. Not my favourite comes in a box like this you might have seen it metal painting box here's another one which is similar to my first metal one that i used the heavy loxley this is this one the heavy loxley that i showed you earlier um and this is quite a nice compact one it's made by herring which are the same people that made the uh liz deacon palette that i showed you earlier you have to just scroll back for that it's the same kind of thing. You can get nice, and it's got deep wells, two really good deep wells, in fact, and two on this side, which is where the liquid can go. A lot of liquid. That's important for watercolour. Um, and we can pop in paints in there and just squeeze them straight in out of the tube. haven't used this one yet, but I certainly will do because it suits my style of painting. And finally, last but not least, <clears throat> well, actually, penultimately, finally, we have this palette, which is watercolor palette. Can't remember the make of this. I think it's a Malaysian company. Uh, does it say on there? Not Korean. There we go. Um, this is quite a nice. It's got a big area there to, to mix water up. Big, big area, big area here. And I quite just like the way that the paints go around there. That's nice. And actually, it keeps the paints rather moist. I'm not sure how they do that, but this kind of locks on and keeps the paint quite moist, which is important. One of my old favourites when you're beginning, really, really cheap, is this palette. Plastic palette. Fantastic. You can buy them in any art shop. Very similar type of thing. The reason, again, you can see why I like this one, because it's got these big wells with lots of liquid to go in. And... <clears throat> Yeah, small palettes. I love this palette. I've taken this outside so many times. This is featured in lots of my watercolour videos. You can see the size of that painting well there, can't you? Absolutely fantastic palette. You won't find this anywhere because many, many years ago I created this myself. I know, quite mad. Um, it took absolutely ages to create this. It's out of tin. Um, and there it is. But this will hold lots of liquid lots of liquid it's starting to get a bit rusty now which is unfortunate but there you go huge palette for outside painting i said that was the end of them but it's kind of it's a mistruth here's another one this one's gone down we've got this high quality watercolor palette from Hyung Il. now i ordered this one online and i've never used it and it was recommended i can't remember who recommended this one it's really really cheap um and it looks similar to the one that I just showed you. Um, and here it is. Look at this. Looks great. I think I could get a lot of use out of this. There's a place for putting in the uh, liquid. Lots of deep wells. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. About, about 12 places to put. So that would be plenty. So here, another great palette. So you can see 
There was a world of palettes, a world of brushes, a world of paints. For the beginner, what do you do? Well, this is what you do. You make sure that you limit what you're going to use. Okay, I've got all these paints and just, whoa, it's too much. Yes, I agree, way too much. So I'd go for Ultramarine, as I said earlier. Yep. I'd also go for Burnt Umber, as I said earlier. I'd go for a neutral tint. That's actually a Payne's Grey, similar. I'd go for a neutral tint. I would go for a Lazarian Crimson. Um, I would also go for a Yellow Ochre or a Raw Sienna. Let's just stay, keep that there. So that's four at the moment. Um, a Burnt Sienna, there's five. And just one more, probably... So we've got, if you look at these from a warm, this is this is the way to do it really. If to say, I think, well, how, I need to cross section my palette. So let's just move these off. I'm gonna go for a sort of warm. That's warm. This is definitely warm. Getting warmer. Getting warmer still, cool and cool. So actually, I could probably go for another cool color. Um, I quite like cerulean and I also like cobalt blue. So let's just go for cobalt blue here. You always need to kind of think about a balance to your palette, but it really does depend on the subjects that you paint. But sticking with, say, those seven colors, um, we have the range of primaries in there, which is good. Then you're gonna learn how they mix together. From these, you can get anything you need. In fact, if I take this out, okay, and I've seen a lot of my videos, we take this out and this, will just have these four colors, especially in my beginner lessons. I'll just use yellow ochre, burnt umber, ultramarine, and a neutral tint. Payne's gray we've got there, but a neutral tint, almost like a kind of black. Okay, that would be enough, just these four. Confusing, isn't it? Stick with the four, and then obviously you can add a, a few more. For this size paper going here, this brush would be ideal. I'd go with this, this is just summing up. I would go with a synthetic for finer detail like this. And then my other one would be this round. Yep, and stick on the principle of four paints, the fourth brush. So it's a number two, a number six of Skodas. This is a Winder and Newton Sable, number 12 round. And this is a Pro Art. Um, mop brush, but there's lots of mop brushes around this kind of size. They will easily do paintings this size. Okay, I tend to just to confuse you a bit, I don't want to confuse you when I use my large and go out and paint large. This bigger mop brush, you can see the difference between the two. There you go, much larger mop brush again, a pro art. But I think you're getting the message that it's down to the type of painting you're gonna do. Bigger paper, bigger brushes, okay? Bigger palettes for bigger paper because you're gonna to need to build up and be able to put on lots of liquid. Okay, so we've got our brushes, we've got a paint, <coughs> excuse me, paint, and we've looked at the papers. Once you've found the ones that you like, last tip, stick with them. If you don't stick with them, you'll keep chopping and changing, and therefore you'll never learn what you need to learn about your chosen paper, your few selected paints, and your few selected brushes. So, remember to subscribe, happy painting, and uh, check out my other videos that show uh, watercolors for beginners and uh, intermediate and experts, and uh, until we meet again next time, take care.